Good morning. I want to take just a minute and encourage you to open your Bibles, spend a few minutes in prayer. I believe it'll be so good for all of us and just honoring to the Lord if we stop scrolling, stop looking for minute by minute news updates, and spend some time talking to the Lord after we listen to Him in His Word. And this morning, I want to encourage you to open your Bible to the book of Matthew, chapter 11. Matthew, chapter 11. And then I'm going to go ahead and read verses 28 through 30. Jesus is speaking and Jesus says, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Twice there. Jesus promises us rest, rest that we desperately need. We are anxious, we are worried, we are fearful, and yet Jesus has offered us rest. And it's my hope and prayer that we would all enjoy this kind of rest. So the question is, how do we get it? Jesus says two things that I think we need to pay attention to. First, he says, come to me. Now, what does it mean to come to Jesus? Not in a goofy sort of come to Jesus like we sometimes joke about, but what does it mean in a serious biblical way to come to Jesus? Well, I believe there are a couple things. Number one, you believe that he is who he said he is. He is the son of God. He is the son of man, both fully God, fully man, the sacrifice for our sins, who died on the cross, paying our debt and rising from the dead. And I just want to ask you, do you believe that? Because if you believe that, the scripture promises you that your sins are forgiven. And if Jesus is your savior, then we need to talk about the second thing that he says in this text. And that is, we need to follow him. He doesn't just say, come to me and believe that I will forgive your sins. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Well, what is a yoke? Well, it's, it's an image from farming. It's something that you would put on an ox or a mule, and you would use it to plow your field. You would drag a plow behind it, behind the animal with it. And so Jesus is using this image of a yoke to describe what it means to follow after him, to be led by him. And specifically, he says, we need to learn from him if we're going to do this. We need to know the things that he taught. We need to do the things that he said for us to do. And if we're going to do that, we need to know who he is. And so I want to invite you to carefully read Luke's gospel. I've just finished preaching it. If, if it would be helpful, you can go to our website and find sermons all the way from chapter 1 all the way through chapter 24. But even more important than that, I want to encourage you to just read the gospel. We've all got more time on our hands than we expected. And even if you don't, even if you're still working full time and you're coming home and checking the news and, and worried, I believe that it would be so helpful for you to just take a few quiet minutes a day and read two chapters of Luke's gospel. I say two chapters because it's 24 chapters long. If you read two chapters a day when, when the 14 day recommendation is done, and, and who knows if it'll really be over by then, but you'll have read Luke's gospel. And if you have more time on your hands, start over. I urge you to know Jesus Christ by reading his word and listening not only to who he said he was, but to who he wants you to be as a follower of Jesus Christ. So I've mentioned coming to Jesus by believing he is the Savior who died for your sins and risen from the dead. I've also mentioned a little bit about following after Jesus. What does it mean for us to have rest? Some of you already know that Jesus is your Savior. Some of you are already following him, and yet you still feel fearful and anxious. So how is it that we can enjoy this rest? Well, I want to mention just a few ways. Number one, you enjoy rest when you remember that your sins are forgiven and you are right with God. Maybe you've never enjoyed that kind of peace. Maybe you need to talk to the Lord and ask him to forgive your sins in prayer and say, God, as best I know how, I believe that Jesus died for my sins and rose from the dead, and I am trusting you that you will forgive me for my sins so that you can have that kind of peace. 
If you're already a Christian, remembering what Jesus has done for you ought to help you remember that, that we have really big things to worry about in the next life, and all of that is taken care of through Jesus Christ. So there is rest there. Not only that, Jesus promises for those who know him that he will be with us. And that might sound strange because Jesus is a man, right? He, but he's more than that. He is the son of God who has existed for all of eternity. And he has promised to give us the Holy Spirit when we believe in him. And so if you have trusted in Jesus Christ, God is with you in a very real way through the person of the Holy Spirit. And so you can talk to him when you are anxious and fearful. You can talk directly to God and tell him about your fears and ask for strength and ask for help. I believe the hymn writer said it so well. Because God is faithful, we can have strength for today and hope for tomorrow. We can rest in Jesus. Let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord, I ask that you would give us this kind of strength. I pray that you would help us even as we are uncertain about tomorrow and, and the days and weeks ahead. I pray that you would give us the strength that we need to follow Christ as we should. Lord, I pray that you would help us to spread your love, to spread the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. But we can only do that as you give us the power. So would you give it to us, Lord? We just want to humbly ask you for it. Give us strength just for today, and we will be faithful to follow you again and again for the rest of our lives until we see you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.